coins or whether it's Bitcoin and crypto. So we see it in two ways. And uh, we run this digital money forum on, on uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, and it looks at both the evolutionary and the revolutionary. The evolutionary, it's kind of cool. You will see vending machines on our show floor that um, just uh, know about you, they know how many calories you like, they know what candy bar you bought last night, great place to learn about mobile payments because nobody's yelling at you on the line to speed it up. Um, we've seen that the card companies, the payment companies, and I want to shout out to Synchrony Financial, who is one of our biggest believers and underwriters, as MasterCard has been, but to keep inventing the window of how you can pay where you are, whether that's in your car, whether it's your car paying your gas pump, whether it's your VR glasses, buying in VR um, after trying on or seeing something that you like. We'll see a lot of robo-checks this year. Um, you'll see a company uh, that's using AI, a uh, company's name is Clink, and you'll hear him say something, a millennial would say like, if I gamble tonight, can I pay my rent next month in natural language, AI, and it will say, yeah, but you can only spend $25. So we're starting to see that, and we're starting to see new programs targeting new the underbanked, people who have never saved money before, with smart, personalized, AI-inclined um, algorithms, you're starting to see campaigns to widen the people who have access to our financial system. So that's the evolutionary look of things. And um, you're also seeing a big trend this year, fintechs and banks, they were fighting. It's kind of over, they've made friends, and. Um, Many fintechs are really a beautiful shell on a lot of ugly legacy banking data. Why you should all care? A, the people that, who make things at CES are making this stuff. They're making the chips to mine the coins, they're making the data to take payments in Genico display technologies. They're all an important part of bracelets. You know, your fitness bracelets today is your tomorrow's payment bracelet. So that's why we need to care. We also need to care as businesses because we're going to do finance differently. So the revolutionary approach um, is actually, and there are my, my slides, but the revolutionary approach is actually so important and so impactful and so amazing that I decided I couldn't cover it myself. And I invited um, my special guest, a pioneer in the crypto industry who's been watching and inventing uh, since the beginning, Matt Rosnett, and Matt will tell you what's he, what he's seeing, which is, I have to tell you in one word, bigger than the internet revolution. So Matt? Uh, what, what happened is Bitcoin punched through $10,000 for one Bitcoin. And what's happened with that is uh, people over the holidays, Thanksgiving, etc., uh, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, like 25 years ago, the conversation over the holidays was, you know, do you have email? Now the conversation is, do you have Bitcoin? It, it's, it, the narrative is changing a lot, and mainstream uh, kind of consumerism of cryptocurrencies is starting to come into focus. Um, on top of that, you see a lot of interesting trends that have transpired over the last uh, five years. Uh, the, the technology was originally born by Satoshi Nakamoto on a 16-page white paper in 2008. And slowly that has uh, bubbled into this, 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 new, uh, this new money layer, this new internet layer. Um, the past year saw several hundred companies raise over three and a half billion through an ICO, an initial point offering. It's a crowdfunding mechanism with these new digital tokens. And it's not only for you know kind of the technologists, the geeks, and the nerds. Uh, this is also for uh, Fortune 1000 companies. So we see uh, Fidelity, CME. Not, not not a single large company on the planet does not have a blockchain strategy today. It is uh, you know like a cloud strategy, like an internet strategy. It is of, of significant consequence. Um, and, and it's it's uh, you know what does what does this mean for uh, uh, you know I guess let, let's do a show of hands who uh, here has any Bitcoin? Okay, that's great. Uh, last year's maybe two people uh, raised their hands. So that's uh, that's a lot of progress. Um, 
it's, uh, it's, it's something that's uh, it, it's got different factors on consumers because you know historically it's been very hard to hold and manage uh, Bitcoin. Uh, for enterprise, they, they're not necessarily playing with the tokens or the crypto. They're they're innovating with blockchain. Um, and then governments. Uh, what, what's interesting is that we're seeing governments trying to figure out how to regulate, how to put some uh, uh, bumpers around this technology and. Uh, China uh, earlier this year banned Bitcoin, banned ICOs, and it essentially put gasoline on the fire. Um, in the last year, uh, I guess uh, a year ago today, the, the market cap of all the cryptocurrencies was over a thousand, uh, was about 20 billion. Today, it's 800 billion. So we're getting to a trillion dollar market cap for an ecosystem. That's of consequence. And if you want to transpose that against uh, the, the early internet, that, that run up was about 10 trillion. So in terms of innovation and, and where we have to go, we've got a long way. But I, I, if you guys recall, uh, people got really excited in the uh, early internet about putting women's shoes and pet food and office supplies online, right? That was like a big deal. People got really excited about that. This is money, this is digital identity, this is a new internet. So, so even layers of Amazon, Amazon Web Services with uh, compute and storage and access are all getting reimagined. Identity, who here you know, believes that they own their own identity? Well, Google and, and Amazon and, and Facebook kind of own that for us. Uh, but what if we can take that back? And these are the systems and uh, the platforms that can help do that. On top of which, you know, we talk about IoT. Well, IoT uh, needs money factors, needs identity factors. Without it, it's just kind of like uh, just things. You know, uh, the Internet of Things needs needs those two key layers. Uh, so we also have a uh, panel of some amazing uh, uh, pioneers and luminaries in the space, including uh, Brad Garlinghouse, who he and who's uh, chairman of Ripple uh, collectively today are worth more than Bill Gates or the uh, Google founders, etc. So it's creating an incredible amount of wealth. It's creating an incredible amount of opportunity for entrepreneurs and investors. Uh, I think the first trillionaire will be uh, in this space, quite frankly. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Rob. Thank you. Okay. Financial institutions, how they think about convenience versus privacy. Um, we'll also have an announcement from, I'm going to call her Sophia Hansen from Hansen Robotics. Sophia will be uh, making her own ICO announcement. And believe it or not, her tender, if you will, is AI algorithms. And the ICO is Singularity Net. So we now have a robot who is making a coin offering based on algorithms that will be traded on a market. everything I'm going to announce today, huh? Uh, today. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's good, it's good. <laughs> All right. Thanks. No problem.